Good afternoon, everyone. And I want to especially welcome our uh, Stanford Libraries GIS team colleagues. And this is the uh, demo for sprint number four, the concluding demo of this GIS Earthworks work cycle. And to start us off, I'm going to turn this over to Jennifer Vine. Okay, so, so my goal is to talk about um, the accessibility work that we did in this work cycle. Um, when we started a work cycle, you know, we're making it a priority to review and improve the accessibility of the application. Um, and the goal is to, the goal of accessibility in general is to enable everyone to use our application regardless of disabilities such as low vision, limited mobility, cognitive impairments. Um, and depending on their disability, a user may depending on, uh, depend on um, assistive technologies to help them use it, such as um, some users have to use the keyboard, they can't use a mouse. Um, some users will use a screen reader that actually reads the content of the screen to them. Um, and so we need to be sure that our um, our application is is supporting those tools and, and works with them. Um, and we looked at several categories of changes. Um, one is to make sure that the, the overall page structure is sound. So a sighted user can easily see, um, I'm going to switch to a search results view because there's more to look at, can easily see that there's some navigation at the top here, there's a banner that identifies the application, there's a search box. And then there's search results that has sections to it. There's the facets and the results and this map. Um, so that's very easy for me as a sighted user to see and to jump to with my mouse. But a non-sighted user doesn't get that same structure without some built-in support in the, in the code. So, um, so what we do is build in some what are called landmarks that identify areas of the page, like um, the navigation at the top and the banner and the search and so on, and the footer, and, and just kind of gives an overall structure to the page. And then in addition to that, there are, there's the heading structure of the page, which, you know, the, what we see is earthworks and limit your search. Those are some headings that kind of give some, some, um, structure to the pages we're looking at it. Um, but there's more that we can do to build in um, some invisible structure for, um, for um, users to be using a screen reader. Um, one of the things the screen reader does that unfortunately I can't show you is um, create a list of headings so that you can jump to um, the, the section that you want really easily. So this page has a lot of um, hidden headings in it. If we look at it here, this is an outline of the page that says it's Earthworks, it's a search result, um, it has a heading for the constraints and the results themselves, and then each result is a heading, um, and then the limit your search section. So that gives a really clear outline of what, it, what this page is made up of and, um, and allows people to kind of move around um, to the section that they want. Um, there's another feature that we can do to support that, which is um, skip links, which if you look in the top right corner here, you'll see there's a skip to search, a skip to main content, and a skip to first result. And what these do is um, they, they jump to that section of the page if you're using your keyboard. So I'm going to show you I'm just using my keyboard right now. They only appear if you're using your keyboard. The mouse will never make those appear. Um, so I can now skip to first result and I'm immediately, if my next keystroke is going to take me to the first result, I don't know if you can see that or not. So these skip links are things that we added with this release. Um, for, the, for the landmarks and the heading structure, we actually um, corrected some errors. So we corrected some misidentified um, regions of the page and we um, removed the duplicate and then the heading structure there was some um, there was some inconsistency in the heading structure where the earthworks title was sort of inserted later down on the page and it was it was a little bit confusing. So we basically just corrected and cleaned up the the internal structure and added the um, 
the skip links to allow people to move around. Um, so the next thing that we needed to get at was every interaction in the application needs to be available to people who, um, who are only using the keyboard. And I'm going to show you the home page for one of the things we fixed here. Um, so I'm using my keyboard right now and I'm tabbing, tab, 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 tab. Now I'm on the map. Um, previously, um, I couldn't tell where I was at this moment. If I had tabbed to this point, I couldn't tell that I was on the map or that um, anything could happen there. Um, but now there's an outline, I don't know if you saw that it appeared as I tabbed to it. So there's a blue outline around the map. And that allows me to use my arrow keys and plus minus to, um, to interact with the map with the keyboard. Now my next tab key is gonna take me to plus minus. And then I'll go to search here. Um, there's just a slight outline around it. I don't know if you can see it when I turn it on and off. And I can actually do that, um, which is great because previously that button, the keyboard could not get to that button for whatever reason. Um, and so we've enabled that feature. Um, the nifty thing that we've enabled on this page is, let me get there. Um, this little icon to the left of the title here actually expands a section that shows you um, a bit of a summary of what this thing is. Um, it was there previously. The only way you could activate it was with a mouse. It wasn't, it wasn't perceivable to a screen reader and the keyboard couldn't get to it. So it just looked like it was decoration. Um, but now I can get to it and uh, for the screen reader, it'll tell me expand um, the summary or, um, or close the summary. And, um, and I could just do that strictly with my keyboard. Um, so those are some improvements we made to, um, to navigation. Um, another issue is that every, well, I've mentioned a couple of these, that every element on the page must be either perceivable and understandable or explicitly hidden. So um, we have some icons here that are indicating some information about this title. Um, these, um, the little image and the Stanford icon and so on. Um, those are meant to be informational, but they weren't actually perceivable by the screen reader um, in like, well, I'm gonna go down a rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> instead of that, I'll just say that we um, instead made these, um, both perceivable and gave them um, clear, um, clear text that indicates um, that they are um, um, images or that indicate what they are. Um, so now that a, a non-sighted user that's using a screen reader can understand what this title is when they're when they're looking at it. Um, and the same is true once they get to this page, um, they can see what these icons are meant to or here understand what these icons are meant to say. At the same time on this page, we have these little icons in the corner here connected to a link. So it's a little visual thing that connects to a link that says citation. That's not carrying any information to, it's just decorative. Um, and we had several of those kinds of icons that were actually just causing noise to screen readers. Um, and so we went through and hid those from the screen reader. So all they see is a link that says citation and that's clear enough. They don't need to know that there's an icon in front of it because it's not telling them anything. Um, so there were a couple of other places where we hid information in that way, including um, the Creative Commons licenses. Um, where am I likely to find one of those? Right there. Um, anyone have a thought about where those are indicated? Okay, I didn't find an example, sorry. But here's another example where there's a lot more icons here that are not useful to uh, um, a non-sighted user. They just are decorative. Um, 
And then the final thing I wanted to point out, I think, was um, yeah, it was just removing the additional noise, um, making sure that all the visual elements have some kind of text equivalent that covers these little icons, for example. And then um, um, the final thing I wanted to say was just that some of these corrections are local to earthworks, but the majority of them are dressed upstream so that they'll benefit all, um, all users. Um, that are that are using um, geo blacklight, and I think some of them are even in blacklight. I'm not sure. Um, so I think that's everything I have to say about what we did with accessibility. Thanks, Jennifer. So the next the next couple of things to talk about are just briefly mentioned. Um, aren't necessarily screen shareable. But uh, one thing uh, that we'll mention is during this work cycle, um, the team worked with our operations teams to update all of the servers that uh, run um, the GIS robots, uh, our geo web services infrastructure, geo server, and Earthworks. So that's actually a total of 17 servers. And um, we had to do some updates to uh, update them to the latest, latest security patches and new operating systems. And so uh, we're happy to report that 15 of 17 have been completed and the remaining two, um, which uh, require a large data migration, um, are kind of slated uh, to be migrated during our next maintenance window. So, um, Thanks to our operations colleagues who uh, helped work on this. Um, during that, also, we upgraded GeoServer to the latest version. So it's now running 2.17.1, which is the latest GeoServer um, uh, installation. So those were kind of, um, I, I actually think the GeoServer upgrade was our um, highest priority item from our business value of, uh, exercise. So we're happy to share that that's been completed. Uh, Jennifer's talked a lot about the accessibility uh, enhancements, um, but I'm just going to talk about some general kind of uh, updates and changes to Earthworks. Um, so uh, one thing that um, uh, you may notice is there's some changes to the homepage, uh, some slight coloring updates and enhancements. Um, uh, links now are this uh, blue color. Um, and you get kind of this visual change when you uh, hover or focus on them. We've also updated the top toolbar here to uh, be a little bit more consistent with other SUL web properties. Um, so that feedback kind of works the same and um, this top bar kind of uh, has the same look and feel. Uh, this bar has actually increased a little bit in size as well, Earthworks. So it's gonna look similar to like Searchworks. Uh, another thing to note is that uh, we have uh, autocomplete back. So uh, autocomplete is now working and um, back, which is great. Um, uh, some other things to kind of call out here is that we've um, updated the uh, some spacing uh, issues. So on these kind of embedded maps pages, there's some spacing problems. And now that's been resolved, so to work better with the uh, footer. A uh, long-standing uh, bug in Earthworks was uh, when you were logged in and viewing a restricted data type, uh, sometimes the map preview didn't work. Um, so we've re-implemented how this works, and uh, now it should work pretty well for you. So hopefully don't see any more problems with these map previews being broken anymore for restricted Stanford content. Um, similarly, Jennifer noted a lot of kind of accessibility improvements with the icons. We've also kind of updated a little bit how they're styled and uh, viewed uh, with improved markup there. And uh, something else uh, to call out in the Earthworks application um, are some enhancements to the data relations widget. So um, the, these have been kind of, this has been kind of updated 
for Earthworks. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how this will work um, and when we'll get these kind of enhancements when we release a new version of Geo Blacklight. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jesse to talk about um, some updates and enhancements to our indexing processes. All right, thanks, Jack. Let me just get uh, my browser here ready. Can you see uh, my screen okay? Yep. Perfect. Um, okay, so um, thanks. And uh, as Jack mentioned, I'm just going to show some of the um, some of the changes that we've made to uh, the indexing and the kind of the content available uh, to us in Earthworks. Um, so um, one of the things that we have done is we've re-indexed content from OpenGeo metadata. Um, so this has brought in some additional records um, that have been added to the various institutions and um, pulled in any um, updates that might have been made. Uh, so this has kind of uh, uh, increased some of our, our, our data um, in, in that respect. Um, also, we've added Cornell to the libraries that we uh, index from OpenGeo metadata. Um, so um, they are now... Uh, their 457 records are now available um, in production in Earthworks. Um, we also uh, wanted to call out that we've um, added some new uh, types of content for Stanford uh, records in particular. Um, we have uh, geo databases that are now uh, indexed under uh, the mixed data type. Uh, also, um, we have collections now being indexed, so the collection records themselves um, being indexed under the data type collection. And um, when the we have the relations widgets um, data pulled in that Jack mentioned earlier, um, we'll be able to start connecting between collections and the items uh, in those collections um, on the records. Um, the last thing that I will show um, is that we. Uh, made some changes to how our MIT uh, content is indexed. Um, so previously, uh, all of our content had been indexed from OpenGeo portal and was not something that we could um, easily rebuild uh, based on the index that we had and, and regathering that data and making sure that we kept all of our records in sync. Um, so we've added something upstream to the Geo Combine library that will allow you, uh, any uh, consumer of Geo Combine, to index records from other Geo Blacklight or really any Blacklight site um, as, they, as they see fit. So we actually use that um, functionality to go and index the um, 10,000 plus records uh, that MIT had in their Geo portal. Um, we ran some comparison code from the previous documents that we had to find the matching ones uh, that were in the, the geo portal from uh, MIT, uh, and then wrote some code to make sure that when uh, somebody went to go load one of those old records, they would in fact be brought to the, um, the, the new record. So I have a couple of examples of this that I'd like to show, um, and luckily I've, uh, I've I loaded these before we uh, made all these changes. So um, you can see here I have uh, a record uh, from the 111th Congressional Districts in 2009. This is an old record um, that we've now uh, updated and indexed uh, from MIT. So you can kind of see um, really briefly, you know, we, we have some additional data available to us. The map has some uh, da additional data, some more metadata. Um, so um, this is a bit of an updated record. Um, and in addition to that, I will show, um, so I mean, I don't know how easy this comes through, but we have this old identifier here. Um, and if I were to actually uh, refresh this, uh, you're gonna see that I was not uh, brought to that old identifier because that record doesn't exist anymore. And I've been um, redirected to this, um, to this new record. So people who had bookmarks um, to these records, things like that, um, hopefully uh, everything should uh, be updated nicely. Um, and I'll just kind of show uh, in a couple of other cases, um, just, you know, uh, records that as I refresh them, um, we kind of, we get additional links uh, available to us um, that weren't there before, um, some kind of indications about the data not being available. 
kind of go away and we get um, uh, links to, to download things that were not available to us before. Um, so that's all I have on the indexing side. I think I'm going to pass it back to uh, Jack to show um, some more changes that happened. So thanks, Jesse. Um, and uh, one thing that Jesse really called out here was a lot of indexing improvements. And the one thing that we've been able to do is update how Earthworks uh, gets indexing requests for SDR. And so instead of um, running a robot to re-index content now, um, actually um, content uh, can actually be indexed directly into Earthworks um, by using the release tag. So by using the manage release tag and releasing it to Earthworks and Argo, content or a collection can be indexed um, automatically uh, into Earthworks. So this, like Jesse mentioned, this has been enabled not only for uh, geospatial content, but also content that's a collection and also content that is content type file. So like file geodatabase or other content. Um, as well as what we've already seen, um, maps, books, and uh, other images. So that's exciting to point out, and that's um, removed a lot of kind of um, old infrastructure in a place of uh, kind of our new way of uh, doing indexing for our discovery platforms. Uh, alongside of this um, is we've updated the way that we update our um, open geo metadata repository. So instead of Chem having to go and manually do this every quarter or every, every few weeks, uh, we now have an automatic process that will just automatically go and um, update OpenGeo metadata uh, for records that have been updated. Um, so this will run every Sunday and uh, we're hoping this just kind of, you know, streamlines uh, some of the accession work. Uh, speaking of accessioning, we've also made a ton of changes to the GIS robot suite, which is the suite of uh, robots that um, uh, it, Kim uses uh, to accession uh, content type geo into SDR. So I mentioned already we removed the GIS discovery robots in favor of the modern indexing pipeline. We also removed some legacy uh, software and legacy dependencies um, from this and uh, for kind of a more community supported um, forward uh, future oriented kind of a software package. Uh, at the same time, we've also added a lot of uh, automated software tests around some of this robot code that previously wasn't tested. So there's been a lot of um, a lot of work has gone into uh, making streamlining this code base, but also in consultation with um, Kim Durante, making it hopefully easier for her and others who are going to accession content, um, um, you know, making their job easier. Um, and then, kind of the final piece of that is. Um, we recently updated these robots now to automatically refresh uh, the geo web cache when a new version of that file gets accessioned. Um, so if content gets reaccessioned, we automatically just clear the cache for that layer. So hopefully that'll make uh, reaccessioning a little bit uh, um, a little bit easier for everyone. So. Um, that's kind of it as far as robot improvements. And the final kind of piece I wanted to let you know about is some of the things that will be coming down the pipeline soon. So we've done a lot of changes upstream, a lot of these accessibility changes and feature changes as much as we can upstream in Geo Blacklight. And we have a few lingering pieces that we haven't yet, um, that we haven't yet shipped. And mostly we're waiting for a new major version of Geo Blacklight just so it's, um, you know, so we don't um, make it harder for others to upgrade. So, and there'll be a Geo Blacklight community sprint in the next couple of weeks, and we'll hopefully uh, get all these, the final features uh, in. Uh, some of those final features include um, some enhancements to the um, data relations widget 
which Jesse talked about, which will kind of um, provide a little bit better uh, collection viewing experience for our content. Um, uh, this is something that Jennifer mentioned, but changing the way, where this kind of little carrot uh, to expand the metadata is located to make it a little to make it more accessible and usable. Uh, some styling changes and updates to this uh, toolbar. Uh, this will make things a little bit uh, nicer all around. And um, just kind of some individual kind of configuration update changes to make things a little bit better, um, you know, a little bit more in line with what Blacklight does. One other thing to call out here is during this work cycle, the team focused on thinking about ways to um, increase um, uh, not only accessibility, but inclusivity and diversity in providing access to um, uh, other sites and data sets. And so we're starting to pilot um, adding additional kind of web applications or web services into Earthworks. And so two identified by the GIS team and, and, and this project team were uh, the NI ev eviction mapping project. And so this is now indexed into Earthworks and users are able to access and uh, you know, gain access to the website here, but also get information about it and the native land website. Um, so once again, some metadata about it, but then also linking out to the site. So, um, you know, so, you know, users looking in Earthworks may find uh, these other types of resources and uh, hopefully can use them.